My name is Alex. Um, I work as a scientific training officer at MOEBI, so the European Bioinformatics Institute in the UK. Um, and as a scientific training officer, well, what do I do? I work together with scientific experts and bioinformaticians to um, develop, organize, and run bioinformatics training courses. I, um, I'm Training, as you see, I also I'm used to prepare training material. I also um, support others in um, preparing training material and sharing this. And yeah, this is why I'm here to talk about um, fair training now. Um, well, why should you um, actually care about sharing your training material? Sharing training material um, can have a lot of um, benefits and there are a lot of reasons for sharing it. For example, other people um, who will um, look for the training material online, they can use it as a so source for self-study and gain a lot of new knowledge from this. But not only for trainees, um, it can be beneficial, but also for trainers. They can um, use the training material they find online as a source of inspiration. They can even reuse the training material um, and um, edit um, it and um, build upon it, which can save them um, a lot of time and money. Um, but also trainers who put their training material online um, can um, get a lot of recognition, of course. So this all sounds great, but when we look for training material online, either as trainees because we need it um, for self-study or um, we are looking for something as a source of inspiration as in, the, in the role of a trainer, um, we know that a lot of questions can occur. So for example, um, we might wonder, well, where can we actually find um, suitable training material? And if we have found it, um, we might wonder, when was it written? Is it still up to date or who wrote it? I still have more questions about the content. Can I contact anyone? Or um, another question might be um, in which context was context was the training material presented. Um, and another important question is, can I actually um, reuse the training material, material? Am I legally allowed to do so? So you see that a lot of questions can pop up. And this is why it's so important if you're sharing from training material to do that in a fair way. So in a way that it is findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Applying the fair principles of training materials provides a framework for enabling um, sharing and about and thereby helping trainers to make the most of the material, but also helping trainers to get um, trainees to get um, um, the, the most ex efficient learning experience. So um, now how can we make training material fair? So there was um, a very um, great publication um, which gives an overview of 10 simple rules for tracking material making training materials fair and in the following I will now um, run um, through these um, um, 10 um, rules and at the um, in the very last minutes of my talk I will also very quickly um, show you how we at Emily BI apply these guidelines to our training. So how can you make your training material more findable? Um, first, you have to describe it properly. And um, by doing so, or you should do so by annotating it um, with structured metadata, so with data which describes your material. And um, for example, Bioschemas um, is an initiative which facilitates the addition of metadata to um, life science resources. And this helps to make it more findable um, online. Um, you should also annotate it with keywords um, using um, um, structured controlled vocabularies. Um, and I will give a more concrete example of this um, at the very, or I will refer back to this at the very end of my talk. Also, you should give it a unique um, identifier. Attaching a persistent identifier to your training material um, makes it more easy to track online, but also will help you um, to be able um, or will make it citable. And um, you can also um, assign um, a persistent identifier um, to um, the author. Um, and we have already heard about the ORCID, um, which um, simply helps to identify um, the, the author unambiguously online. Um, of course, you should also um, add your training material to an online repository so that other people know that it exists. And these repositories can be institutional ones, but they can also be open ones. This can be general ones or more, more field specific ones. We have already heard some, for example, um, Synodo, which is a more general one. And um, in the bioinformatics field, we, for example, have Alexia Tess. Alexia Tess is a life science training portal where you can find a lot of um, bioinformatics and life science training material. Well, how to make your training material more accessible? 
by um, um, making it findable in a repository and assigning um, a persistent identifier to it, you already are nearer um, to, to the step to, to make it more accessible for others. But then the accessibility of training material can um, vary for different reasons. There might be material um, which is um, more restricted, where the access is more restricted because it's, for example, only accessible for specific members of a university or payment might be required or the training material can be completely open. It's always very important to clearly um, state, clearly define how people can access the material. And even um, maybe also do this in plain English so that there is absolutely no confusion of um, how people um, can access it. So that it will be simply more, um, be more accessible by being transparent about this. Well, how can you make your training material more interoperable? Um, when you share training material, you should always keep in mind that other people um, might um, want to reuse it, might to edit it, might want to build upon it. Um, and um, you, you also have to consider that other people might want to use your training material across different computational systems or might even want to use it offline. So you have to balance um, very carefully which formats you want to take for your training material. For example, if you give a presentation and um, you think about presenting it um, in, in a PowerPoint format, well, this is always very helpful um, if um, because people or trainers um, can um, edit this very easily and can build upon it. Um, in, if you, for, for example, compare this with a PDF format, which is not so easily editable. But then a PDF format is, of course, much more easily um, usable across different computational systems. So you have to um, carefully um, yeah, consider this when you deliver training. Um, well, how can you make your training um, um, even more reusable? It's very important that you assign a license um, to your training material. So this will allow other people um, to know if they are allowed to reuse it and how they are allowed to reuse it. And also tell them how your material should be cited when they reuse it. Also add um, more metadata to describe the context of the material and thus help the trainers um, to get more information about your material. This should, for example, include when was the material written and who wrote it, um, where was it presented, in what context, um, what was the, uh, the target audi audience of the event, and what were the learning outcomes of um, this event. Also keep your training material up to date and clearly state um, when it was last updated and also welcome contributions. So encourage others um, to provide feedback and contribute to the further development of your material. So I have given you now a lot of um, guidelines um, in theory and in the following um, last um, few minutes, I would very quickly like to show you how we apply these guidelines um, for our um, training that we deliver um, or that we provide at MBI. So um, first, um, we, um, as I've already told you, we um, offer bioinformatics training and our training um, does comprise um, live um, training courses, which are face-to-face -face courses, not at the moment, of course, um, but also virtual courses and live webinars. And we also have on-demand training, so online training like online tutorials, recorded webinars and course materials. And you can access and find every, um, all of our training offer on our course web page. We, um, um, in the following hour, very quick, uh, very more um, refer to the online tutorials we have. So we describe all our online materials properly by, um, for example, using e-dermatology. So e-dermatology is a set of controlled vocabularies, um, which describes concepts which are very common in bioinformatics and computational biology. We also link the MBLEDI resources, so the databases that are covered in the training um, tutorials um, to, um, the, to the tutorials. And we also describe them um, using um, extra terms and keywords which describe the topics of the tutorials. By this, um, we aid the search and search out complete function on our web page. We also give unique identifiers to our tutorials. For example, you can see here that we um, have a DUI and with um, this digital object identifier, we make um, this tutorial citable by others. And also our authors, they have um, orchids assigned to them. So they are also um, unambiguously identifiable. We also make our material reusable. We um, have um, um, licenses assigned to our material. We, for example, um, use a CC BY SA license, which um, allows for other people to use our material, to transform it and rebuild on it. Um, but they should give us credit and also share it under the same license again. Um, we also keep our training material up to date. We keep it up to date or we review it um, once a year and um, we clearly state um, on the page, on the web page, um, when it was last updated. 
What is now not shown here is um, that we also ask um, our trainees for feedback. So we have um, standard feedback forms where we really encourage people to let us know um, what they think about our training material and to give us um, helpful feedback so that we can revise it um, regularly. So all in all, I should say, um, this is all work in progress. So um, we still can make um, our training um, much more fairer. And this is a long process to really um, make it very fair. And um, for example, we are working on adding um, further metadata tags um, to our material and also expanding the downloadable materials, just um, to name um, a few examples. With this, um, I'm at the end. I've also um, provided um, some more helpful resources. Um, I have included the paper here to the 10 simple rules. And then there are also two webinars where you can, um, which you can watch where you can find more information. And I will also add them to the, to the living document um, which is provided. So if we have time for questions and if there should be any questions, I'm happy to receive them. And otherwise you can always, of course, also con contact me um, through my email address or find me on LinkedIn.